Hello, middle school math teacher. If you are looking for some end of the year activity ideas that will continue to keep your students engaged, still makes math meaningful, and is still mathy, I have three awesome ideas for you. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. Okay, so let's dive into these three ideas, shall we? The end of the school year is a very weird time and I wanna help you still continue to make math meaningful and still give your students some mathy activities. So the first activity that I always like to use and have my students do is to complete an end of the year reflection. And you could do this at any point towards the end of the year. All I do is have my students really reflect and just assess their year. It's really important for us as humans to really assess and think about how things are going for us in our lives, you know, like what we want to do to improve, what's going well, what's going not well. And it's the same for math class. So I like to have my students think about and answer questions like, what did I struggle with this year? What surprised me this year? What am I proud of? What do I hope to accomplish next year? I allow students to share their thoughts with the class if they want to, but there's never any pressure. And I personally love reading these reflections because it helps impact my own teaching. If students, you know, I feel like it kind of indirectly tells me what I can do better as an educator. Okay, number two, idea number two is to play two truths and a lie, but math style. I actually like to play two truths and a lie at the beginning of the year when we are getting to know each other, where we're talking more, you know, playing two truths and a lie with us personally, you know, sharing personal information. But at this point, now that we have learned so much, it's kind of fun to play two truths and a lie you know, math style. So all students have to do is they share two true statements and one lie about any math concept that they learned. So for example, statement number one, a variable is a symbol that represents an unknown number. Statement number two, parallel lines intersect. And num statement number three, one plus one equals two. Okay, so which statement is the lie, right? Which one is the lie? So the lie is statement number two, parallel lines do not intersect, right? And so we can play this as a whole class. We can play this in small groups. You can have students write their two truths and a lie statements on like an index card, collect a ball, and then share them like every day for however many days you have, you know, that are however many days you have students, if that makes sense. So if you have 38 students, you can share them for 38 days in a row. Um, however way you want to do this, it's just a super fun activity. And my number three, my favorite activity to use during this time, during the school year, where you have a few weeks, few days left, and you're just like, Ugh, I can't really teach, like, I guess I can teach content, but you know, you're just kind of in this, like, what's the point kind of thinking because you have say three days left and it's just like, it's, it's not happening, um, but you still want to do something meaningful. So what I like to do is to use choice boards. My choice boards are set up in a three by three grid. It looks kind of like tic-tac-toe, but all the squares are filled in with things that your students can do based on what they choose to do, right? And for me, I love choice boards because for me as an educator, I don't care what they're choosing. I don't tell them that, but I don't care what they pick. I just want them to pick something that they want to do. Many of my choice boards are kind of broken up into different math um, concepts. So like I have a choice board for fractions. I have a choice board for geometry. I have a choice board for, um, I think I have like, uh, fractions, geometry, there's like equations. Like I have five different kinds um, that I like to just, I let my students pick what kind they want. So if they're like, oh, I love the geometry stuff, give me that, great, you know? And I let them pick, okay, pick one of these today or pick two of these for homework, like whatever you want to do. There's, like I said, 
I love to give my students choice because it gives them the power and the autonomy for their own learning. And then I don't feel like I'm being, you know, the bad guy or the mean teacher here by forcing them to do something, right? They're choosing what they want to do. They get to pick what they want to pick and everybody wins. And if you are like, man, that sounds great. Where can I get some choice boards for myself? Use the link right below this video and you can grab my choice boards absolutely free because I want you to be able to have them because I know how weird this time is. So I'd love to know in the comments below, let me know which of these activities you are going to be using first. And if you are in the midst of this weird time space continuum between, you know, your state testing and the last day of school, I hope you, I hope everything goes smoothly. Wish you all the luck. And if there's anything I can do, let me know. I hope that you do grab these choice boards because they are awesome. And until next time, bye for now.